With the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park this summer, I thought it would be nice to discuss one of America's favorite travel destinations, the dinosaur-themed attraction. These attractions have been popular for decades, but they really saw a boom after the release and phenomenal success of the Jurassic Park film. There are many different kinds of dinosaur-themed attractions, including dinosaur exhibits and museums, traveling dinosaur-themed exhibits, and the not so rare but often misunderstood roadside dinosaur. And I hope to eventually discuss them all, but in this video, we are going to discuss the Dinosaur Park attraction. And we're going to define dinosaur parks as permanent outdoor attractions that feature at least three full-size dinosaur statues. They can be found throughout the world, but we are going to mostly focus on the United States. So let's check the weather for potential severe storms, pay attention to our dinosaur tour guide CD-ROM, and hope they're actually going to have dinosaurs on their uh, dinosaur tour. My dear viewer, welcome to the United States Dinosaur Parks. Welcome to Jurassic Park. But the story of the Dinosaur Park does not begin on the shores of this great continent. Oh no, the first real dinosaur park started in England, with the establishment of the Crystal Palace Dinosaur Park in London, and it opened in 1854. The Dinosaur Park, which can still be viewed today, is a collection of 15 full-size dinosaur and prehistoric animal statues situated around a series of water bodies and islands for viewing. The statues were designed by Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins back at the dawn of the science of paleontology and were a phenomenal hit at the time. Because the park was the first of its kind and the reconstructed dinosaurs reflected the very earliest concepts of what dinosaurs may have looked like, the statues are considered to be extremely inaccurate by modern paleontological standards. This statue, representing the Megalosaurus, is one of the most famous of the statues found at the park. Here the early Crystal Palace statue concept of the Megalosaurus is compared to a modern interpretation. Another famous set of statues from this park represents the early interpretation of the Iguanodon. And here's the modern interpretation of what the Iguanodon looked like in life. And the park also includes various prehistoric marine creatures. Here we see a Plesiosaurus and an Ichthyosaurus, and the modern interpretations of what these aquatic beasts look like. And yet another famous set of statues from the Crystal Palace Dinosaur Park. These sculptures were interpretations of the Hylaeosaurus. Here is a modern reconstruction of a Gastonia, which was a close relative of the Hylaeosaurus, and is often thought to look very similar. There are many great and in-depth videos on the Crystal Palace dinosaurs, and I highly recommend checking them out. The dinosaur interpretations may look strange to modern eyes, but they were the first of their kind, and they still have a vintage and an imaginative charm to them. To gaze on these statues, to look back to the beginning of the study of these prehistoric creatures, and it was this park that would ignite the fire for the public's passion to see these beasts reconstructed and available for viewing. In fact, it wasn't long before the public in the United States wanted to have their own dinosaur park. Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins was again commissioned to design a dinosaur park to be constructed in New York City. The park was planned to be opened in the mid to late 1870s, but tragedy and vandalism struck first, and the park was never created. The United States would have to wait over 50 more years before getting its own dinosaur park. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't say the magic word. Oh, and wait, we did. Many museums and exhibits that famously depicted dinosaur fossils opened in the meantime, but a dinosaur park was still on the distant horizon. And then one day, the dinosaurs returned. And that would happen in the distant and still rugged west, where dinosaur fossils were still prevalent. Out in the badlands of South Dakota, close to the giant gazing faces of Mount Rushmore in Rapid City. 
The dinosaur park in Rapid City, South Dakota is considered the first dinosaur park in the United States, containing seven statues of prehistoric beasts. It was opened in 1936 on a hill that overlooks the city. The construction of the statues was a Works Progress Administration project from the Great Depression. They were designed by Emmett Sullivan and were meant to capitalize on the tourists coming to the Black Hills to see Mount Rushmore. The dinosaur statues are constructed of concrete over a metal frame and are all primarily painted green with white as a secondary color. They have become one of the most popular and well-known vintage roadside attractions. The dinosaurs of the park have become icons of American automobile tourism and while they represent the classic and out-of-date interpretations of these dinosaurs, they are still considered important to the history of travel and tourism in the United States. And there are many postcards that depict these creatures throughout the years, and many generations fondly remember trips to see these icons. The park is still operational today. In fact, it recently went through full renovation, where the statues were repaired and repainted, and walkways and stairs were added and improved to make access easier. In addition, an updated tourist center and gift shop was added to the attraction. The old park is looking better than ever. No expense was spared, except for dentures for the T-Rex. Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. Sullivan also designed and constructed a large brontosaurus statue outside the mega kitsch tourist attraction known as Wall Drug, which is an American roadside mecca of its own right and features a giant animatronic T-Rex, which I hope to feature in an upcoming video about roadside dinosaurs. But the dinosaur park in Rapid City, South Dakota was not the only dinosaur park that was constructed around this time. There was another that would follow closely behind. The park that was known as Domkey's Gardens in Michigan. Domkey's Gardens was created by Paul Nathan Domkey in the late 1930s. Evolutionary history suggests that the first exhibit was created in 1936, which would make it contemporaneous to the better known South Dakota Park. New dinosaurs were added over the years, each constructed of cement on a metal frame. Paul Domkey constructed 27 dinosaurs over about 40 years, and even added scenery and full-size prehistoric dioramas. One could even go inside the brontosaurus statue. And while some of the statues look strange and out of date by today's standards, Domkey was rumored to put a lot of work into his creation, even visiting museums and other dinosaur exhibits in an attempt to make them look as accurate as possible. Another relic of a forgotten and barely understood age, Domkey's gardens are a great reminder of the roadside attractions that inhabited the American roadways in the past and so Domkey's Gardens would fall into obscurity and die. But it lived. Domkey's Gardens has changed hands many times, but the gardens are still open and can be visited today. These classic interpretations of all your favorite dinosaurs are still roaming the Michigan forest well into the present, and maybe beyond. And yes, while not scientifically accurate portrayals that many associate with these species, they are better detailed, painted, and positioned than their slightly earlier brethren in South Dakota. Life found a way. And so we enter the 1950s. After the Second World War, American roadway tourism reached all new heights, and so the humble dinosaur evolved and flourished in this new ecosystem. Many dinosaur attractions and parks came into existence and died out shortly after, such as the nearby prehistoric forest in Irish Hills, Michigan. They should all be destroyed! <laughs> but we're going to look at a different prehistoric forest, one that existed in the Pacific Northwest in distant Oregon, the dinosaur park called the Prehistoric Gardens. The gardens were created by E.V. Nelson, who was a budding artist, but he became an accountant to ensure financial security for his family. Nelson was even offered a job at the Walt Disney Studios, but turned it down. But he was not done creating yet, and decided that the world needed more full-size replicas of prehistoric monsters. 
and he was right. The prehistoric gardens opened in 1955 and featured 25 life-size dinosaurs. It quickly became one of the most remembered tourist destinations in the area. Here is an old pamphlet from the attraction. It touts scientifically accurate restorations, as well as a description of the plant life in the area. This plant life would become an important selling point. The pamphlet notes the existence of other dinosaur attractions, but also states that the restorations found at this park are the only ones found at that time in a rainforest setting, with plant life surrounding them that mimics the habitat in which these creatures lived. And once again, life found a way. These gardens still exist and can be visited to this very day by intrepid explorers and dinosaur hunters. The statues are still in place today and they are still surrounded by the lush rainforest that will have you thinking of that ancient and primitive time. The concept that prehistoric beast statues will be located in landscapes that mimic, or at least reminds one of the ancient world, will later be revisited. But for now we must move on to the next major dinosaur park to be constructed. Dinosaur Land was opened in the late 1960s in White Post, Virginia. Started as a gift shop by Joseph Garachi, Garachi would hire Field Museum of Chicago artist James Sidewell to create dinosaur statues for his gift shop. Sidewell was one of the first to use fiberglass instead of concrete for his restorations. But he would not just stick to dinosaurs. Garachi and Sidewell would also offer a giant shark, a giant gorilla, a giant octopus, and other giant monsters, just to keep those tourists entertained. You're selling it. You're gonna sell it. And Garachi was all in when it came to getting tourists to come and see his wonderful prehistoric world. Dinosaur Land of Virginia features a brutal landscape where creatures are often locked in battle and those too weak or unfortunate become casualties of the other dinosaur statues. Please help me. The sign outside says educational prehistoric forest, but make no bones about it. Upon entering, you're about to see some badass. Damn! This park is still operational and has continually added more statues throughout the years. More recent statues were created by Mark Klein, the creator of other booty kicking straight up metal attractions such as Dinosaur Kingdom and Foamhenge. I won't cover those in this video, but be warned, if you see them you will never be the same. But unfortunately many dinosaur attractions are no longer with us. Nature selects them to go extinct. We know that they were there, from the remains, the clues they leave behind. Dinosaur World in Beaver, Arkansas was one such casualty, but the history it left behind was just too good not to mention it. It was started in 1967 by Ola Farwell, who hired Emmett Sullivan of Rapid City Dinosaur Park fame to build several full-size dinosaur statues for his new park. In the 1970s, the park would be purchased by Ken Childs, who would continue to add new statues, including a giant gorilla. He would use the name of his friend, actor John Agar, when rechristening his new Lost Kingdom and call it John Agar's Land of Kong. When it was operating, it was touted as the largest dinosaur park in the world. The park would also claim that it had the largest King Kong statue in the world. Truly, the owner was so preoccupied with whether or not he could, he didn't stop to think if he should. Eventually, the park was renamed Dinosaur World, but it finally closed down in 2005. The remnants can still be seen today, reminding us of a time when Arkansas was home to the largest ape on Earth. Dinosaur parks are still a very important part of the American roadway and automobile tourism landscape. They are still loved and frequented by children, but adults often have fond memories of these parks and visit them for that nostalgic feeling and for the great retro and kitsch vibe. 
A great example of how these dinosaur parks have become icons of the American roadway tourist industry are the dinosaur statues of Cabazon, California. These statues are famously featured in the film Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Also known as Claude Bell's dinosaurs, the giant statues were the brainchild of sculptor Claude Bell, who started construction on the giant brontosaurus in 1964 to attract customers to his nearby restaurant. The brontosaurus was such a success that Mr. Bell began creating his second giant dinosaur statue, a T-Rex, in 1981. And while usually the dinosaurs are considered to be more of the roadside variety, in this case I'm going to put them in the dinosaur park category. The primary reason is that in the 1990s, a creationist museum was added to the giant roadside sculptures. Along with this museum, the owners added several more large dinosaur statues, albeit much smaller than the giant Bell originals, and added walking trails to view the new prehistoric beasts. An eclectic collection, but one of the most famous dinosaur attractions in the United States. And that, mostly due to time constraints, brings us to one of the most important years in the existence of dinosaurs on Earth. No, not the year the famous meteor fell and wiped out most of the creatures of this kind, but the year that Jurassic Park was released into theaters, 1993. That same year, the town of Ogden, Utah would open the George S. Eccles Dinosaur Park. A marvel of modern dinosaur attractions, this park would feature much more realistic depictions of the reptilian behemoths in dynamic scenes, many automated and enhanced with a sound system. This kind of attraction started to set a new standard for dinosaur attractions across the country and many dinosaur exhibits, both permanent and touring, would follow this style. But Ogden's Dinosaur Park was only the beginning of a new wave of dinosaur mania that would sweep the nation due to Spielberg's dinosaur film. Zoos and other wildlife attractions around the country would begin to take the hint and new dinosaur attractions began popping up across the country to satisfy demand. Yeah, there are. One of the most well-known and among the most famous of the modern dinosaur attractions that is not directly connected with a bigger and far more involved park is Dinosaur World located in between Tampa and Orlando in Florida. Dinosaur World is actually one of three related parks. The other two are located in Kentucky and Texas, but it is the Florida park that tends to be the most well-known of the three. It was opened in 1998 at the site of an earlier reptile and alligator themed park. It is one of the largest dinosaur parks in the United States and features full-size restorations of over 150 prehistoric creatures. The detail and the accuracy of the restorations varies highly, and since they were added periodically over the last 25 years that the park has been in business, you are likely to encounter different interpretations of the same animal. And like its distant ancestor, the Crystal Palace Dinosaur Park, there are marine creatures on display also. One of the best things about this park is seeing the creatures displayed in a setting that is highly reminiscent of the warm and swampy environment that many inhabited during their day, an ecosystem that is even now known for containing many primitive and relic species. Dinosaur parks have continued to be an important part of the American tourism and entertainment industry, and new species pop up continually across the landscape, sometimes in the most unexpected places. A good example of this is this little dinosaur park that opened in Cedar, Texas outside of Austin in 2005. It's not a large or complex dinosaur park, but it offers some nice dino statues that one can tour for a modest price. There may be a Jurassic experience near you that you don't even know about. The dinosaur park still exists, and it can be still found down many of America's roadways, but the permanent dinosaur park has slowly evolved and given ground to a faster, more mobile species. Must go faster. The temporary or traveling dinosaur park. These are very popular in the present era of geological history and feature large, full-size dinosaurs that are often enhanced with animatronic movements and sound effects. Unlike their permanent cousins, they roam the landscape, temporarily setting up in zoos, 
fairgrounds, museum grounds, or botanical gardens, then moving on to find new territory to hunt in. Examples of these include Jurassic Quest, Jurassic Park, and Dinos and Dragons, which features both animatronic dinosaurs and animatronic dragons. Sometimes these traveling exhibits can be held inside large warehouse-like buildings too. And to be fair, this is not a new concept, and really is a dinosaur-sized topic all to itself. One of the most famous versions of the traveling or temporary dinosaur exhibit is Sinclair's Dino Land, which was featured at both the 1933 and 1964 World's Fairs. Sinclair's 1964 Dino Land Park was a phenomenon and is one of the most famous exhibitions in the history of dinosaur exhibits. It was very popular and was considered quite the marvel at the time and versions of these dinosaurs still grace roadside dinosaur attractions across the United States today. But sometimes people love dinosaur parks so much that they just throw some dinosaur statues into a city park and call it a day. A great example of this is in the town of Mountainburg in Arkansas. In 1980, a local named Douglas Birchfield was so filled with love for these ancient beasts that he designed and built dinosaur statues right there in the community park. Now we're left with a question. Is it a dinosaur park? Is it a roadside dinosaur? It's hard to tell. This is not a unique occurrence, and different versions of this can be found across this great land. Here we begin to blur the lines between what is a dinosaur park and what is a roadside dinosaur, yet another taxonomic classification of dinosaur attraction that is prolific across the United States. The roadside dinosaur is similar, but an entirely different beast. They can move in herds, but often roam solitary across the landscape, and can show up anywhere at the most unexpected times. They are not usually directly associated with a standardized dinosaur theme, but can represent shops, restaurants, or even just stand on their own. Curious wonders of the roadside world. They often can be scientifically accurate, but more often than not they are strange and unearthly beasts, conjured by some mad artist's imagination. They are a standard of roadside Americana. But they are a topic for another video. Thank you for taking yet another trip with us into the ancient, savage, and somewhat befuddling past. As you resume your life in the modern, civilized world, I ask you to contemplate the wonders you have seen. I hope to make future videos showcasing the strange prehistoric world of dinosaur attractions, so stay tuned for more. Please hit the like button and subscribe to stay in touch with future content, and continue to join us for more adventures to look at the big things that make every road trip a potential for adventure through time. Thank you.